Thank you so much. Okay, uh, dear colleagues, um, I have a presentation, but it doesn't show us the, the result. We are all working here together, and I would like to hear your voice. I would like to hear your ideas more. You are all welcome to write in comments, ask any time questions. You don't need to wait for me to give you the chance to talk. And I, I'm not the authority here. I'm just um, taking the lead and I want all the teachers to help and to, um, you know, share their ideas. Um, this is the fourth Teachers in Pro Together session. And in the first one, we talked about generally like teaching English and the teachers struggles. And the next one was about classroom management. And the last, the previous one was uh, flipped learning. You can find the videos on YouTube. You can see our teachers presentations on my YouTube channel, City Kids TV. And it's a platform where we all work together as I have already mentioned. So let's begin. I would like to hear your ideas, first of all, um, in terms of teaching vocabulary. If you're ready, please share your ideas. Go to Mentimeter, all right? Here is the link, the first link, the, the first code. Um, Gökçe, could you please write the code in the chat box? Because I need to open Mentimeter here, or maybe I can use my phone. Did you all um, open, could you all open it? So here you will go to the Mentimeter and this is the code. Using this code or using this QR code, you will go to Mentimeter and share your ideas. What do you always do while teaching vocabulary? And I will your answers here. Yes. Oh, yeah. I have two answers. That's great. Let me show the screen. What do you always do while you are teaching vocabulary? Wow, you, I always use pictures. I always play games, use mimics and gestures. Yeah, visuals, drama techniques, you write. Yeah, personalization, this is the key that we're going to talk today. Oh, <laughs> Ondan sonra benim de bir şeyim vardır kanka. Hello, welcome. Gülşah Hocam. Okay. Yeah, um, use visuals. Want to, want to use... Do you know how I can see the whole screen? Maybe this way? Okay. Try to get my students to think and guess the word from mimics. This is the key. This is the key. Making them curious about what they are going to learn. Yeah. Thank you so much for all your answers. So we use pictures, play games. We use gestures, visuals, drama techniques. These are the keys that I want to um, talk about today. How about how about something you never do while you are teaching vocabulary? Now let's go to Mentimeter again, but this time please share your ideas what you never do while you are teaching vocabulary. I'm really curious about it. Hi, Gusho Ujam. Good evening, welcome. Hello. Good evening. So you can go to Mentimeter and share your ideas there. Okay. Did you all get the code? Now I'm checking the notes. What you never do. 
Oh, good answers. Wait, wait, wait. You need to see this. Make them learn by heart. Memorization. Make them write the words five times. No, ten times. You need to say. Uh, I never say never. Yeah. Sometimes you need to do the things you say. I will never do this, right? Give Turkish definition. Say the meaning. Okay. Translation. Using the mother language. Okay. Good ones. Yeah. Sometimes I agree. You shouldn't say never. Never say never. I mean, but our focus needs to be on the communicative approach and the meaningful approach. Writing the words for five times is not meaningful for the brains of our students. Thank you so much for your answers. You already make the point. You already make the point. Um, my master's degree was about teaching vocabulary. So um, today's session will be both my academic uh, background, my research about teaching vocabulary, and all your experiences. Sometimes academic background means nothing in the real classroom environment. Sometimes it helps us to understand the scientific reasons behind all the things that we do in our classroom, why we are doing what. And when it comes to teaching vocabulary, today I'm not going to focus on the brain-based part of it because I studied teaching vocabulary to young learners through brain-based strategies, but teaching brain-based way is something else. Maybe it can be another topic of another webinar. So today I will just give you the useful points about teaching vocabulary about the first impression it can be the first step and then learning understanding practice and recalling remembering the words although they look like going step by step they are all holistic sometimes it helps the last step sometimes the last step helps the second one and it goes on like this what i mean by first impression yeah, this is my master's thesis, sorry. Uh, the, the steps are all linked like a bridge in between. The first step, first impression. In this step, you either get the attention of your student or you lose the attention of your student. So the student thinks, is it something meaningful? Is it something I need? Is it something I want? So whatever you do in the first impression, we need to get the attention and we need to make the students think that, yes, you want it. Yes, you need it. Yes, you like it. We need to make the students think in this way. Um, while to, to, do, to achieve this goal, we can get help from stories, drama or pictures or asking a question. Dear colleagues, I don't know what course book you are using. I don't know which school you are working at. You can be a state school teacher. You can be a private school teacher. You can be a freelance teacher. Doesn't matter. Whatever course book you're using, you can always start your new unit with a question. Because as you know, the units begin with the vocabulary teaching part most of the time. And it gives the context. And throughout the context, we want the students to get familiar with the vocabulary that they're going to use throughout the unit. Asking a question, asking a critical thinking question. For example, um, I'm just thinking it right now. Uh, what, asking why questions. Let's say your unit is about transportation, okay? And you can ask, why do people go from home to cinema why why do they go we don't ask the direct question i mean the question which is uh, leading the students to the words we are asking them to think and then we make them curious about the the new unit 
by asking those critical thinking questions, we make the students uh, to talk more, to produce more. Of course, it depends on the level of the students and the level of the book that you're using. But I'm sure that you can find the best question that is suitable for your own classroom because you are the queens, you are the kings of your own classroom, nobody else. And by asking questions, having drama activities or pictures, we get the attention of the students. This is the, the most critical part because uh, this, uh, the, a normal human being's brain has only 30 seconds to give importance to something. Just 30 seconds. That's why the beginning of the videos, YouTube videos, that's why the beginnings of the programs or anything, it is aimed to get the attention of your, your um, attention of you. If the producer loses your attention in 30 minutes, you know, they can't show you, they can't give you anything else. As teachers, we are also show makers. We are also program makers. The students are our audience. So we have 30 seconds to get the attention of our students. I don't know if I'm uh, talking strictly or not but the first impression is really critical. Then the learning process comes. In the learning process, um, I know there are some other methodological processes, but processes, but uh, I want you to uh, learn um, the, the most important things about, to get or share the most important things about teaching vocabulary. Meaning, but how? spelling you know pronunciation and the stress of the word stress of the word is really critical please no matter how old your students are uh, give importance to pronunciation and the word stress because word stress changes everything uh, and throughout their career life they will have difficulties in terms of speaking English if they don't know the importance of the word stress. Giving the meaning is um, should be in the context because the context gives us the story and the spelling is also important. Um, and then uh, they start writing and typing the word. But of course, instead of giving them the assignment to write the word for five times, we can um, vary our activities uh, so that they can practice writing for many times uh, in different activities in different ways. In today's session, I'm just giving you the important points. Um, I'm planning to give the second, the next webinar as a uh, lesson demo, teaching vocabulary demo class. Uh, next session will be like a uh, real teaching classroom environment here in Teachers Improve Together. So I'm just giving now the important points today. And the practice, personalization, personalizing, whatever. Yeah, when we are teaching the new words, um, we, uh, we sometimes get help from the experiences of our students. If you know that your student has an experience, you can use it in your classroom so that they can personalize the word into their own life. Um, this is the, the most helpful way for me to teach vocabulary to the children. Uh huh. Okay, the recalling association and the repetition part. By looking at these two pictures, I, I want to ask you, uh, how do you interpret these two pictures? You can write your ideas in the comment or just raise your hand or without raising your hand, you can talk. What does this mean? A situation, repetition, remembering the words, any ideas?
No idea. Too bad, Chakruja. I saw your name here. I don't know if you're available to talk or not. No. Okay. Uh, yes. Can I interpret? Sure. I the think it, yes, the, hmm. uh, the first uh, pictures shows that the thing in our mind, the thing we know, but we never use. The second picture is about the things we know and also we can use at the same time. Yes, yes. And the first picture, the first recalling, yes, Marvel jump. But um, which picture represents the easy and effective way of remembering anything? The first or the second? I mean, on the left or on the right? The second one. Second one. The second one, of course. Um, yes, Kibrauja. In the second one, we know where the information is and how we can find it. And we know for what purpose we can use it. But in the first one, everything is given. Everything is, you know, um, put randomly. We can't find where our socks are. We can't find uh, what to wear, we can't find uh, what to use. So what I mean is that, this is an analogy for me, when we learn a new information, a new word, there are drawers in our brain. First one is my tape. <laughs> Sometimes mine looks like that too, to my job. <laughs> You're right. So when we learn a new word, or let's say when we teach a new vocabulary item to our students, okay, first we get the attention of the students and we give the information through a context. And in the context, we teach them the meaning, the spelling, pronunciation, and the words to trust. And the, the, the last important step is that, what is the student going to do that with information? Where the student is going to put that information in his brain. There are drawers. Uh, the neurons always are connected. They are connected with each other. The more they connect, the better it is for us to remember the information. So we need to put the, uh, the vocabulary with the other associated vocabulary items like put, categorizing them or putting them together. But this categorization is unique. It, does, it changes from one student to another. Uh, personally, I totally disagree with this kind of course books. If the course book teaches the vocabulary like clothes, you know, um, weather conditions, um, days of the week, or um, everything is given one by one, but nothing, not other vocabulary item is expected in this category. This is not meaningful for the students. What I mean is that we don't need to uh, categorize the words in terms of their um, grouping in a st st standard way. Instead, we can make a story using uh, clothes using, you know, um, yes, I'm going to read it, using clothes, using, uh, you know, days of the week together, using um, other, other words so that they can associate the words in a story. When they uh, remember one word, they will also remember the other words which are used in the same story. You know, this is association. A situation doesn't mean that the same category of vocabulary items. No, it means the, 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 the vocabulary items which are used in a um, story, in a story that is in the brain of the student. The story can be unique. The story can be different. It is all about our learner's brain. And then they put them into the unique places so that they can find it easily. Sometimes do you, do you find yourself like this? 
um, where is my jacket? Where is my pink jacket? You have a pink jacket, but you don't know where it is. Although <laughs> you put it very nicely, you put it very cleanly, you know, it is in your wardrobe, but you can't find it. It's because you didn't give much importance to your pink jacket. If you could um, open the wardrobe and look at it for several times, and if you um, remember it, if you say that, okay, my jacket is here, next time I will look at it again, 24 hours later, I will look at it again. This is repetition. If we give chances for our students to repeat the vocabulary items in a meaningful way, they will never forget where their pink jacket is. They will always remember, okay, my jacket is here. I, I know how to use it. I know where to use it. And I know what the function of it. This is association and repetition. It is kind of different. I would like to hear your ideas about this because I don't know if I'm uh, clear enough. These can be um, some my, you know, the, the, all these things can be in my mind. I think it is meaningful, but it might not be meaningful to you. Can I hear your ideas? You completely agree. Birsel Hocam, can we hear you if you're available? Uh, hello, yes, I'm available. Yes, what do you think about this? Um, I think the same, really, because the vocabulary they learn um, have to make sense in their minds. Um, and after that, and also repetition, uh, they should use that many times um, by personalizing them. Yeah. And, and by this way, they can learn them better, I think. Yeah, yes, you're right. And I use mind maps a lot of times in my classes because mind maps represent the the way of the neurons work in our brain um, when they draw lines they uh, associate the words with other words and it is their own story their own unique story do you use word boxes in your classes or with your private students anybody who gets help from the idea of uh, word boxes It's like you have the word, you have the box and you put the word cards into the box and um, Tuba Ojam, do you use it? I think yes, you do. Yeah. Would you like to share your experiences about it? No. <laughs> yes, no, okay. Okay, I, I want you to talk more, but however you prefer, it's okay. Welcome, Ajam. Are you here? Are you still here? No, I'm gonna ask him. He is left. Yes, wait, please. Okay, Tuba Ajam, we are waiting. Any experiences about the use of word boxes in the classes? Nisanur Ajam, you look like you're using it. I can share my experience if it's okay. Uh, of course, uh, sorry. of course. Sorry, no, no, I'll wait for Nissan Ruja. Sorry. No, it's okay for me, thank you. But uh, I hope teacher, but I'm sorry, I don't use it, but I will, promise. <laughs> I give you my word. It's your preferred so jump. Yes, but for me to the jump, we will. Well, I do it when I present a new topic. Um, I remember using it when I was teaching shapes. I have a like a small box. It looks like a treasure chest and I put the shapes, cut them and put the shapes in them. It really attracts attention and at the first when, when we first present it and we open the chest together um, with like a magic or something in a magical way. And then I show them each um, cards and the shapes. Then we associate it with a real object. Wow. And then I ask them to, well, I'm teaching online, by the way, and then I ask, I first I show them some um, objects and pictures, 
that is related with the shape. And then I asked them to show me anything around them that looks like this shape. Wow. And then they, you know, whenever they look at that shape, they will remember that word or jump. Exactly. Yeah, it worked. It works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Any other teachers who have experiences about other vocabulary teaching techniques? How to use if, um, Okay. About word box, this is how I do. Let me explain how I use it. I always ask my students to have their own box. It can be a shoe box or it can be a special box, what, whatever. They can also decorate the box however they prefer. And um, at the end of each week, I provide the students with that week's vocabulary items with the pictures and the English word of it. Uh, so they, uh, they get the picture, pictures of the words and they cut them out and they put them in the word box. At the end of the month, they have lots of vocabulary pictures. It is like a picture dictionary in a box. And they can play games with their parents. Like they can explain the word and the other one can guess what it is. And um, they can make a sentence with it. So the, as the students uh, English improve, I ask them to write their own sample sentence on the other side of the of the card, but I never ask them to write the Turkish definition of the word, Turkish translation of the word. No, instead of this, I ask them to draw the picture and to write the word and write the English definition of it and write their own sample sentence. This also helps the learner autonomy in my classes. I ask them, read this book, choose your five favorite words from this book, um, I, I'm not telling them which word that they need to choose. They choose their own words to learn and they use the word box in their own free time as well. Sometimes I use it uh, as a teaching, teaching material. Sometimes I let the students use the box for their own learning process and they control it. They control this process. It helps them to be an autonomous learner, to help them write a letter to teach a friend or parents. Yes, Tuvajam. Yes, Mirayojam, we can use it as tabu. You can, um, you know, enrich your ideas about how to use the word box. There are many, many games that you can come up with. I'm sure, I'm sure. Okay, uh, any other ideas about teaching vocabulary? Any other? struggles or questions hocam Türkçe olmadan nasıl yapacağız questions or any any other things uh, for this uh, I'm planning the next TIT event to show you the real classroom environment about teaching vocabulary it, we will create um, a demo class together now we are just talking about the key points uh, Fatma Beti hocam uses the whiteboard Ask them to guess and vice versa, like hot chair maybe. There are lots of games that we can we can play actually. Okay, so before I forget, um, our webinar is about to end, but now we we're going to play a game, and after the game we will finish our webinar. Please don't forget to get your certificates in your Lang Legends profile. Um, I, I, will, I would like to remind it to you. So, game time, shall we? Yes. If you don't have any comments or any questions, Kibra Hocam is ready to play the game. <laughs> Nisan Hocam is also ready. Okay, so, for yeah, Pelin Hocam, yay, game time. This is a very simple, simple and easy game that you can use in your online classes or your face-to-face -face classes. Now, I want the first round, let's make it first round by round, five volunteer teacher friends. Welcome, Ojam. Yes, you're here now. <laughs> Welcome. Do you want to play the game, Welcome, Ojam? Would you like to be the first volunteer? Welcome, Ojam. Can you hear us? No. 
I would love. Okay, then. Okay. Well, Kono J is the first volunteer. Any other? Four more. Nisa Nuruja. Okay. Okay, teacher. Fatma Bütün Hocam. Pelin Karagöz Hocam. Uh, four. And the last one, Kübra Hocam. Would you like to? Yes, of course. Okay. I'm just saying your names. Pelin, Kübra, Nisa, Fatma Bütün and Volkan Hocam. Are you all ready? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we have five. Here is the... This, uh, this, you can play this game at the end of your unit or at the end of the term, however mm -hmm. you prefer. Let's see. Okay. One. As you can see, you don't need to prepare something really beautiful. Just use the whiteboard. That's it. So here, uh, Pelino Jump, can you tell me one... Um, possible, you know, possible uh, unit can be in the, in the, in the coursework. For example, transportation. It's my favorite thing today. <laughs> transportation. Any others? Um, can it be food? Food. Yeah. Food um, and beverages, maybe. Next one. Weather conditions. Weather, weather conditions. <laughs> the last one. Clothes. Animals. 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 Okay, animals. Uh, but we are five people, right? Let me have another column. One last Sport. time. Sports. Sports. Okay. What? Welcome to job. Sports. Sports. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, one, two, three, four, and five. Welcome, Ojam, you're number one. Pelin Ojam, you are number two, but wait, don't start yet. Fatma Betil Ojam, you're number three. Uh, Kibra Ojam, you're number four. Who was the last volunteer? Nisan Ojam. You are five, okay? Volkan Hocam, what is your number? One. <laughs> who is number two? <laughs> Pelin Hocam, who is number three? It's me. Okay, Fatma Hocam, who is number four? It's me, Kibra. Kibra And Ojam. the last one, Five. Me, me, okay. me. me. <laughs> I'm having my timer, okay? You all have um 15 seconds just 15 seconds to mm -hmm. write as many let's say 30 seconds as many vocabulary items related to your category as many oh. vocabulary items as you can write please mm -hmm. choose a vocal jump can you use your phone to write no i, I think oh i can yes i can yes can you? yeah okay you write Please choose a different color, okay? Choose a different color. No, yellow All is good. All right, I'll try. Yellow is good. Welcome, Ojam. Yellow is yours. Okay. Um, and Pelin Ojam, what color? Green is mine. Oh, okay. Mm, okay, I will sorry, change I'm changing mine. Okay, red. Okay. I took red. I took red, but it's going to be hard to write Please on. Sandra Ojam, you can choose red or blue. Of course. Teacher. Okay, so go mm -hmm. to your categories because in the class you can give different colored pens or board markers to your students. It will be easier. Okay, <coughs> did you choose your did colors? You yes. 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 So when I, something are you all ready? Happened. Yes, yes. Nisan Rojam, are you ready? Can, can you hear me? Something happened, I couldn't find the problem. Wait a minute. Okay. Or you can start, of course. Of course, you can start, but something happened. I don't know. Maybe we can choose yeah. another teacher instead of you, huh? Okay, okay teacher. Time. Okay, teacher. I can listen because I use my tablet and it is harder for me. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Who wants to join? 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> Metin Aç Delan, are you available to play the game? No. Aynur Adı Güzel, can you hear us? No. Then Gökçe. Huh? Gökçe, can you write on the board? Ah, oh, teacher, I came back. Okay. Come on, Lisa. <laughs> All right. You you deserve okay. it. Come on, let's start. Yeah. Let's start. I'm the luckiest so, one go today. Go to your <laughs> categories. Um, just you have thirty seconds. <laughs> no, 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 not don't start yet, Pelin Oja. <laughs> Wow. It is the it. first time I'm using the annotation tool. I got so excited. Okay, okay. <laughs> I usually okay. make students use it. <laughs> you have 15 seconds. So when I say one, two, three, go, you need to write as many words as you can write in your category. All right, 15 seconds. One, two, three, go. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Last one second. Time's up. Oh. Hands up. <laughs> it's really hard to write on the phone. Okay, yeah. wait. Number this two is, is so using hard. keyboards. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is it's unfair. Okay. So, <laughs> bus, plane, vocal jump. Could you read them for us? Train? <laughs> Train? Cycle. No apples, Train and cycle. Okay. How about weather conditions, Fatma Bitloja? <laughs> um, I wrote sunny, rainy, spitting, flaking, snowy. That's it. Okay. How about animals? Cat, okay. dog, bird, <laughs> fish, elephant. Bird. How yeah. many do you all have? I think. I have six. Okay. Please, no job. Of course, you use the keyboard, well, right? It's obvious that you want. Work much faster. Okay. What I do as the second step in my real classroom is that um, I give them the board markers or the pens. And after the 15 seconds, I tell them to change the category. They move. They move to the next one and they change. For example, Volkan Ocar wrote the transportation. In the next round, he writes in the food and beverages, but he needs to write different things, not written oh. here on the list. Mm -hmm. hmm? That's challenging. Yeah, it's challenging. <laughs> it is challenging. If you were to play the game, you would have to play the game. I would have to play the game. I would have to play the game. I, um, that's why you are using different colors. In the second round, um, you go to the next category and you write all the other words and you use your different color pencil so that we can understand who wrote what. Okay.